Watch post-fight interviews and unaired prelims only on UFC.com. Great night. Um, I, I'm, I'm so pumped. for. I was excited for these fights on paper. I thought these fights look great. You never know how it's, how it's really going to turn out. But I, I said this at the press conference before, and I'll say it again. You know, 99.9% of the time, these guys always deliver. They go out and put on a great performance, and that's why we are where we are. You know, we go out, put on all the bells and whistles, lob up the softball, and these guys always hit home runs. Um, so thank you to everybody on the card. I wanted, I wanted to point out a couple of things. I was thinking earlier during the fights. I, I forget because, you know, the night goes so long and so crazy. Things happen here and there. But Alan Belcher, you know, is a guy who we've had our eye on for a long time. This guy gets better every time he gets in there and fight. And he, he went in there against a very tough guy in Patrick Cote. I have a lot of respect for Cote. Um, he hit Belcher with some big shots tonight. Belcher weathered the storm and ends up pulling off the victory. And uh, I don't disagree with him. I think Belcher is, is getting himself in position uh, for some good things here in the future. Um, Matt Mitrione and Kimbo, I, uh, I said that I was, uh, you know, I had a lot of respect for Kimbo and, and how he's handled this whole thing. A lot of trash talking for a couple years by me. Um, took, up, uh, took me up on my challenge, came into the Ultimate Fighter, and uh, tonight he got beat by Matt Mitrione. Um, Mitrione's first uh, was 1-0, came in and, and, and took Kimbo out tonight. Always been, since the day I met Jeremy Stevens, I've been a fan of this kid. He's a great kid. You meet him out in the street, he's one of the nicest kids you'll ever meet. Uh, couldn't say enough good things about him. And what I love about him in the octagon is he's a little beast. You know, everything he throws is with bad intentions. Um, he, he's, uh, he's tough as nails. He keeps coming forward. You know when he fights, it's going to be an exciting, entertaining fight. And, I mean, what could I say about Sam Stout? I, I don't know if anybody's won more fight of the night money than this kid has. Um, <clears throat> and then Kosh checking daily, a lot of smack talking going on in this fight. And a lot of times when, when you know, uh, there's that much smack talking going back and forth, which is very rare in mixed martial arts. It just goes to show uh, that these guys have a lot of respect for each other, and maybe it's a safety first fight instead of the all-out war you think it's going to be. Um, very, very weird fight, and I'm sure you guys have a lot of questions about that fight. Um, Shogun, who approved tonight that the first time, uh, you know, maybe everybody was right with the scoring, to go out and knock out Leota Machida, in the first round the way that he did. I, I mean, to say it's impre impressive is stupid. It's, uh, it's unbelievable. It's incredible. And when he, was, uh, when he first came over into the UFC and I was talking about the ring rust, he had had the back-to-back -back knee surgeries. Um, you know, I always believed that once this kid got back in and, and, and uh, was active, he had the possibility to do some great things again. Well, let me tell you what. Shogun Hua is back. Not only is he the champion of the light heavyweight division, he is back. Dana, can I have you follow up on that incident? He's done. I don't give a if he's the best 170-pounder in the world. He'll never come back here again. We're talking Paul Daly. Yeah. You're cutting him from the UFC. Yeah, he'll never come back. I'm probably the most lenient guy in sports, and this is probably one of the most lenient organizations. And I... Uh, you know, we're all human. We all make mistakes. Things happen. There's no, there's no excuse for that. We're, these guys are professional athletes. You don't ever hit a guy blatantly after the bell like that, whether you're frustrated or not. And, and it was probably one of the dumbest things I've ever seen because he is a talented guy, and he is one of the best 170-pounders in the world. And I was actually impressed with his takedown defense because, you know, there isn't wrestling in England. He's obviously been working on his wrestling game, and it was his He's beat all the top guys at 170 pounds, comes in and faces Koscheck, who's, who's a good fighter, and hung in there. You know, the stuff like the eye gouging, the hit after the bell, all that stuff, that will not ever be tolerated, and, and he's done. He'll, I don't care if he fights in every show all over the world and becomes the best, and everybody thinks he's the pound-for-pound pound best in the world. He will never fight in the UFC ever again. Done. You mentioned Alan Belcher and, and how great he did tonight. That's four out of five and a really uh, close one the last. Could he possibly be a guy that maybe there's a third fight for Anderson before he moves up? Is he, is he working into that mix? I, you know what? I don't know. You know, we've got to go back and assess. But I've been watching Belcher for a while. I, the thing I like about Belcher, he, he's, he's the kind of fighter that I like. This kid comes in very aggressive, doesn't lay around, doesn't he's, he, you know, he took some big shots tonight from Cote. And Cote is a tough guy and, and can knock you out with either hand. He stayed right in there. The body kicks 
that he hit him with tonight reminded me of when I was in Japan and saw Merkel Krokop fight. Merkel Krokop was kicking Noguera that, that night when they fought, and uh, you could see the welts on his body as soon as he'd kick, and you saw that on Cote tonight. Cote ate those kicks like a man, and, and, and he was laying them like a champ. I, I'll tell you, I was very impressed with Belcher tonight, and he gets more and more impressive every time he fights. He's in the mix. I don't disagree with him. When he went up there and said tonight that he's in the mix with Anderson Silva, you know, and, and could fight for the 185-pound title, I don't disagree with him at all. Where does Kimbo go from here? That's probably Kimbo's last fight in the UFC. Yeah. Listen, Kimbo, Kim, Kimbo made it farther than I thought he would. And, and, uh, and like I said, I, uh, I ended up with, I didn't know Kimbo. You know, I just knew what I saw. The first time I ever met him, I said, this is going to be an interesting meeting. Uh, that I've said about this guy over the last two years. Um, he came in. He couldn't be a nicer guy. He took this serious, trained, went after it. He did. I don't care. You know, his uh, first fight wasn't you know the YouTube fights you saw, but he won. He won that fight. He deserved another fight in the UFC, and he lost. So I, I got nothing but respect for Kimbo, and I like him as a person, and I think he's carried himself uh, really well. Watch post-fight interviews and unaired prelims only on UFC.com.